Welcome back to our walk. As we continue to journey on in God's Word, um, you know, we've been doing this for months now. And as you see in the Psalms, it, it repeats itself. And that's going to be a very heavy emphasis of our Psalm today, that history repeats itself. Um, we, we talk about our faith as a faith of, of history. That the, the faith that God gives us, or frankly, the, the uh, vastness and awesomeness of God as the creator of the earth, that is, that is actually history. That it's not just made up. That uh, the things that happen in and amongst God's story, the whole narrative of God, uh, whether it be, yes, Jesus Christ is the first and foremost, that he was actually a human being, that he was uh, actually tried by Pontius the Pilate. He was uh, dead and, and rose again and is a witness to 500 people. And those people all uh, were going forward into even their deaths to be able to profess that this was real. The history of God's action in creation is real. And Psalm 66 brings that forward. It, it, it wants to repeat history to be able to say, because God has saved in this way, you know that he will do it again and that he continually does it in his creation. And, and it matches together God's saving act and God's creation act as just these unbelievable powers, that, they, that they're joined together, that he is so powerful in saving us, but also creating us for the purpose of salvation and for the purpose of others coming to that word of salvation. Psalm 66, I'm going to do a little bit of a different devotion this morning. I want to walk through it because um, it does speak to history. And so I want to jump back and forth. So keep your eyes peeled on, on Psalm 66, but I'm going to be jumping back and forth in and amongst the narrative of God and amongst the reign of God uh, to see what they're talking about in this history. So let's read together. And then I'll give a little bit of uh, interaction uh, in and amongst the verses here. It says, Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. And, and most likely in your Bible, you have uh, a little uh, italicized word that's called selah. And then that Selah is this kind of musical break as those the Psalms are seen as hymns. And it's like this musical break because you're going to see three of those in Psalm 66 uh, because there's three distinct stanzas in this Psalm. This first four verses is talking about the awesome deeds of God in his creative action of being able to say, look at what he has created. How awesome are his deeds. Uh, it is you can just go out into creation and see how awesome our God is, or you can go into look into His Word and, and frankly throughout Joshua and all the conquest of Jericho and throughout the the land of of Canaan, uh, being able to see how awesome are His deeds that He fought the battles for His Israelites, and so it gets us to look back on how awesome is the creative act of God, and then it sends us forth into this next stanza and it says, "Come and see what God has done." Not just hear, but come and see what God has done. Look back. Look back in history. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in man's behalf. Now it's in amongst creation. Now it's in amongst what we can see as we have relationship with one another. Come and see how awesome his works in man's behalf. And then he gets really deliberate here in history. He says, he turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. And he takes us back to the most unbelievable salvation story, but apart from the cross of Jesus Christ, uh, it takes us back to Exodus. And the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt. But then they were at this Red Sea, or the Reed Sea as it's called in Hebrew. And, and they were there standing before, and they saw the enemies approaching them. And then he split the waters. And this is no small salvific act that God is saying, or frankly, the psalmist is leaning on, because it says this, he turned the sea, and the sea, the word for sea is yam in Hebrew. And yam was one of the cosmic powers that people would worship at that time. They would worship yam, the name, frankly, of a cosmic power that was called the sea. But then also, they passed through the waters, and that waters word in Hebrew is nahar. And nahar, it was also a cosmic power. 
And in this myth called the Canaanite uh, mythology uh, at this time, Baal, you've probably heard that name before, Baal was this god that they worshipped. Uh, the, the prophets of Baal, all these kind of things we see throughout the Old Testament. And Baal, just to see how powerful he was or the myth of that he was, was that Baal conquered Yam and Nahar to have cosmic power over all of nature. And so the psalmist is speaking here to that mythology once again of saying, it wasn't Baal. It was the one who created these things that has power over the sea. He made it come dry land. He made it part. He, he, he had millions of people walk through the waters. Nahar, walk through it. This is a God that is powerful. Come, let us rejoice in him. Just as in Exodus 15, the Israelites on the other side of the Red Sea rejoiced and gave that great song of, of deliverance. God is doing the same too. History repeats itself. God has saved us, brought us through the waters of baptisms. Let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let us let not the rebellious rise up against him. And there ends the stanza. Let's go to the next stanza. It says, Praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through the fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I'll come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. And this is amazing at the end of the stanza of just all the sacrifices and the offering that he's going to bring to the Lord. All the offerings, meaning pretty much all of these uh, bulls and goats and calves and all these things, is just your whole self. Everything that I have, I'm going to bring to you. Because this is really kind of in history, looking back um, and looking forward, frankly, of Israelite, the community, going through the exile and how they were refined by the Babylonian exile. For 70 years, they were in that exile and slavery once again. But God delivered them and it brought them back to his temple in Jerusalem. In verse 13, I will come to your temple with burnt offerings. I'm going to be able to establish myself and worship you again because you have once again acted in man's history and brought salvation and brought us back to who we are. But then, as we reflect on history, as we go back in faith and see what God has done, see his awesome deeds, see how he has saved us, I pray that this is our words that we go out into our everyday life because we will impact, we will encounter people that need to hear and to see the God of history. Let's read 16 through 20. Come and listen. Welcome people. Come and listen. All you who fear God, let me tell you what he has done for me. Make it personal. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. The God of history has saved you through the waters. The God of history has walked you to this point in your life. The God of history is impacting you so that you can encounter others and say, come and listen to what God has done in my life. I pray that you have that bravery. I pray that you have that courage to be able to encounter others and say, come and listen. Whether it be inviting them to come and listen to God's word with you at church, whether it be come and listen to what God has done to in our family home, whether it be come and listen to just what he has done in my life. Go ahead and tell all, show the awesome deeds of God and what he has done on your behalf, on your man's behalf, on your life. What a great psalm we have for us today. I, I apologize for the time that it took us to get through it, but what a great word of God. Broken up into see, see his awesome deeds, hear what he has done for his people, and rest assured that our God is a God of history, that our faith is real, that if he did it before, he will do it and is doing it today. I pray that you can encounter all creation and all of other people and just say that one word, come and listen for what God has done in my life. God's blessings on your day.